Hi, this is Debbie, and today I'm sharing a video I created for my Doodling with Debbie series for Simon Says Stamp. I was messaging with my sister the other day, and she asked if I was going to do a tartan card for Valentine's, and so here we are. I thought I would keep this card clean and simple and use minimal supplies. So this is a card you can knock up at any time, even with just a day or so to go before the day. I've watercolored various plaids and tartans over the years. I call this pattern a tartan, but I think the correct term is plaid, as the pattern has a randomness to it, whereas a tartan is more uniform in design. Regarding colour palettes, my favourite is a classic red, light grey and dark grey combination. I've worked out the colours I'm going to use and mix those into three wells of a palette. I'm using Archer's Cold Press watercolour card and two sizes of flat brush. Flat brushes make life easier for painting stripes, but you can use any brush by painting the bordering lines of the stripe and then fill in the gaps. But yes, flat brushes make life a little easier. I've taken my piece of card to a board and this will help prevent warping, but it will also aid in painting the stripes. I find that when I first place my brush down, I'm not into the flow of the stroke and my bristles are not uniformly flat. So by starting off the paper first and getting the brush how I want it to be, I get a more consistent stripe width. The key here is to go slow and steady. The first dark grey stripe I painted was at real speed, but now I've sped the video up by a factor of eight, so I hope that shows you just how slowly I was painting this pattern. For each stripe I painted across the paper at a diagonal once, and then evened up the stripe by painting it a second time. The larger of the two flat brushes holds plenty of water and it wasn't a problem to paint the whole stripe without refilling my brush. However, for the smaller brush, I often run out of paint part way. And my tip here is that once you've refilled your brush, you start back in on an area already painted. And that way you will have a more consistent stripe and flow of paint through the stripe. I painted the stripes in a random order of brush widths and colors, and also gaps between the stripes. Just remember that if you butt one stripe up against another, then the first stripe has to be fully dry or the colours will bleed together. And for that, I just made sure to hit any stripes with my heat gun before painting the next one. I finished painting stripes across the panel in one direction and then dried it fully with my heat gun before moving on to the stripes in the other direction. I also made sure to wipe away any excess paint from the masking tape at this point as I didn't want these blobs of colour to get pulled across the paper once I started in the other direction. I've not talked about the colour meter I'm using yet. These are Daniel Smith watercolours, but any water-based medium would work. You could colour the stripes with brush markers, re-inkers, or squidge water-based inks onto a mat and pick up the colour with a brush. I didn't mention my media until this point on purpose because I want you to use what you have to hand. You don't even need to use water-based media. You could colour the stripes with pencils or weave strips of card together to create a pattern. Once I'd finished the second set of stripes, I dried the panel with my heat tool again and then lifted the painter's tape. And this is always a favourite part as the blue tape is rather distracting. However, it is the best I've found and lifts easily too without tearing the paper. Moving on and I'm adding more detail to stripes with a white gel pen. I love using a white gel pen, but there is an act to using one. First, go slow and let the gel flow. If the pen is jumping, then warm the ink up a little by scribbling on your hand to get it flowing again. When drawing these stripes on, I found that slow, steady, backward and forward motions gave the best results. Once dry, you can always go back in and fill in any gaps if necessary, but don't try doing that while the ink is still wet or it just seems to lift ink off rather than depositing more. This panel would make a great background for a card, but I want to die cut a heart from it. And to do that, I'm using the nested heart dies from Simsa Stamp. I chose one of the dies which would fill a card front nicely and then chose the area I wanted to cut the die from. I then ran that through my die cutting machine off screen. I keep the rest of this panel to use on another card. In fact, I did use a little of it at the end of this video to accent a matching envelope to go with the card. The heart for this card was inspired by a little tartan heart I have and the stitching around the edge made me reach for the wonky rectangles die to add a stitch detail around a piece of ivory card on which to mount the heart. 
I use foam squares generously over the back of the heart and then 3M foam tape over the back of the ivory panel. I mounted the panel to a card base cut and scored from Fog Card from Samsa Stamp. These two colours of card are probably my most often reach for. In fact, if I had to choose just a few colours of card to have in my stash, I'd have Ivory, Fog, Slate and Black from Simon and then throw in Nina Solar White and Nina Desert Storm. Oh, and of course some watercolour card from Archers. If you add in hot and cold pressed, that would make eight lots of card. One of my favourite ways to add a sentiment for card is on a skinny black strip with white heat embossing. And so I'm really enjoying these sentiment strips from Kathy Zilski. Being pre-printed, they are so simple to cut up and add to your card, and each pack comes with a range of greeting options. I chose the Always and Forever sentiment and cut that with a ruler and a craft knife. I recently got this crafter's companion knife to replace my ancient Martha Stewart one, and I really like it. It's got a soft grip, angled body, which is comfortable to hold and doesn't roll around on the desk. I added foam tape to the back of the strip and then used a T-square ruler to make sure I had it on straight. I then used a trio of pink and main glossy silver dots to accent around the sentiment. I like these dots as they add a bit of bling while toning with everything. I was excited to see the new envelope dies in the recent Samsung stamp release. This is the A2 V flat one and I love that you can cut an envelope from whatever card you want. I must look out some thinner watercolour cards so I can watercolour on envelopes too. Anyway, I cut the main panel and two of the side triangle pieces from ivory card and added score tape to the back of the flaps before lining them up to create the body of the envelope. I then added more tape to the sides of the bottom flap and folded it up to complete the envelope. I took a skinny strip of my watercolour pattern and added that down the side of the front for a pop of matching colour. So there you have it, a clean and simple card with a watercolour tartan heart and matching envelope. This card would be great for Valentine's, but also I picked a sentiment that would work well for an anniversary too. I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used today, as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at LimeDoodoDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.